I'm a management consultant by profession and um, was a wild card when I entered into real estate with a partner of mine about seven years ago. So at that time we were new to this sector and we were trying to sort of learn the ropes as they say. Um, fast forward seven years on, I'm currently the chief commercial officer in the Oxy Group which is a, it's a real estate firm that does a lot more than just real estate. Uh, we are based in Pakistan, we're based in Hungary and we have recently entered the services and retail industry as well. The Oxy Mall is an idea that we've been thinking and discussing and debating for many years. Each time we travel to Europe, we notice that semi-urban communities have access to fantastic organized retail. In Pakistan, with a large population with fantastic potential for retail, still has very limited organized retail. Despite the fact that retail is 19% of our GDP, despite the fact it's the second largest employer in the country, despite the fact that our forecasted annum per annum growth in retail is close to about 8%, which is you know one of the higher numbers in the region. But if you look at Pakistan, barring the major urban cities, there's very little organized retail and proper malls operating in semi-urban communities. So the Oxy Mall is a vision to provide a mall that has good amenities, that has a good tenant mix, and that is high footfall, tailored for communities that are aware of brands that have purchasing power and they do not wish to travel one hour to get access to uh, a good shopping and entertainment experience. The mall is primarily addressing two problems that exist currently in the market. The first is that malls are constructed well but not managed well. So there's a management problem and I being a management consultant from my background am aware of the importance of uh, finishing the task at hand. And what we want to provide them to the Oxy Mall is a new standard of retail. The second problem that we're addressing is that retail, even now, is an inconvenient experience. One that requires people to travel considerable distance, plan in advance, maybe days even, when they have to make a visit to the local mall, for example. Our mall is located in the heart of a semi-urban community. It gives them access where there is nothing comparable of that nature. And in many ways, it is risky, but that's exactly why it's needed. Because most retailers and realtors are attracted towards the major urban centers and they ignore the immense potential that semi-urban communities provide. For retailers, we offer the convenience of a centrally managed building that has all the important amenities they would expect from a seven-star mall. The biggest attraction is the turnover. So we have a forecasted turnover of close to a billion rupees by 2022 for this mall. But secondly, the rent to sales ratio is low. So what we are offering them in, in essence is low managerial costs, a more efficient retail model, a retail space that is tailored and customized to their requirements, depending on whether they like large shopping spaces or whether they prefer to have a small outlet. And most importantly, the tenant mix is suited for clothing brands, for food and beverage, and for household conveniences. For customers, what we are primarily providing through this mall are the sorts of brands that meet their expectations, but are still affordable. And that's a mix that is very rare to find in most malls nowadays. They're either out of reach, or the brands are not the type that they desire. So this is a mall that is being constructed and managed in line with the community's demands. Now, the community that I'm referring to in Tehsil Kalar Saida is unusual because it has a far higher disposable income than the average for Rawal Pindi. So one third of the people who live in that area have an income that is in excess of 30,000 rupees per month. Secondly, they have family members based in the UK, Denmark, Norway, who are well aware of some of the better brands available globally and locally. So this is an aware community. It's a young community with buying power. What they simply don't have are the options that they desire. For investors, there are again two key points that we offer. The first is that unlike a standard mall where shops are sold and where the responsibility of managing those shops and generating income falls on the investors, here, investors purchase a share in the firm that owns the mall. And like any share, there's an appreciation in the share value. There's also income that the share generates. But that happens without them having to worry about getting tenants on board, convincing them to stay and managing the tenants. 
So all of the income that the mall generates is divided equally amongst the shareholders. Secondly, the internal rate of return is fairly decent. It's 21.4%. There's a cash back in about seven years. And this provides them the option of an income generating asset for many, many years to come in the future. Kalar Saida is an unusual community in terms of the levels of education and the buying power that exists. So one third of the community has a monthly income in excess of 30,000 rupees. A large number of people from Kalar Saida are part of the Pakistani diaspora in the UK, in Norway, in Europe, in the US. And these are people who want good brands. Even in the summer seasons when they travel back to Pakistan, when relatives come, they demand good shopping and they have to travel a considerable distance to Islamabad or other major cities to actually get a decent shopping experience. For us, every project carries risk. But risk is different from uncertainty. Risk means we've done our homework. And we've, did, we've done our homework this time around as well. As I said, because of my background as a management consultant, I made sure that this was by far the first project of its kind in that territory that has a big four firm conducting the feasibility analysis. So we haven't really taken any chances here. We've looked at the numbers, we've investigated them. My background in stats allowed me to actually conduct the market survey with a great deal of precision. We don't want to gamble here, we want to get it right. Because the objective is not just a one-off um, bonus for us, it's really to generate a model that is sustainable for others as well to replicate. So I'm quite confident that our working and our numbers and our knowledge of the community from where my partners belong gives us an edge over here. Our team is unusual because I doubt you'll find another structure similar to what we have currently in the market. We have people with three decades of experience in real estate. We have people with experience in management consulting. We have people in ex who have extensive experience of wholesale, import and export, all part of the same group. We are of the same age group as well, far younger than our uh, peers and colleagues. And more importantly, our vision is global. So back in 2017, we started in Europe and we're expanding in Europe as well. So what we really seek to provide are two things. The first is access to financial products for people who are looking for alternative assets instead of just stocks and bonds. And we also take the capital that is generated and invest it in businesses that we launch and manage. So that reduces the risk and it also means we provide immense employment possibilities for people in Pakistan and in Europe. The Oxy Mall is a ground plus one structure with close to 97,000 square feet in gross covered area and approximately about 48,000 square feet in gross lettable area. The mall in the first phase will have close to about 60 branded stores and then 18 food and beverage outlets and then a kids play area as well as a dedicated exhibition area and 100 dedicated car parking slots as well. In phase two, which is the expansion phase, the mall will add another 37,000 square feet in gross covered area as well as the cinema.